What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the R-41 Star Chaser, a ship that missed out on being the main starfighter for both the Republic and the Rebel Alliance. Manufactured by Horish Kessel Drive Incorporated, this fighter sold for only 55,000 credits, which is ridiculous because it makes it cheaper than the TIE Fighter and about a third of the cost of the ARC-170 and the X-Wing. At a length of 16.3 meters, or 53 feet, it was about two Wookiees longer than the X-Wing and about equal to the B-Wing. At a width of 14.4 meters, or 47 feet, it was about a vulture droid thinner than the ARC-170. While at 3.73 meters, or 12 feet tall, it was just barely shorter than the ARC-170 and around one-third the height of the ATST. Its top speed of 1,050 km per hour, or 652 miles per hour, made it equal to the Republic and the Rebels' main fighter, but slower than the Z-95 and the TIE fighter. As for its hyperdrive speed, the Class II was the same as the B-Wing, but slower than the X-Wing and the A-Wing. The R-41's maneuverability rating of 75 DPF meant that it handled the same as the X-Wing, but was better than the Y-Wing and worse than all TIE fighter variants. Its shielding of 30 SPD was actually better than the Z-95, but weaker than the X-Wing. Its hull was also weaker than the X-Wing at 14 RU, which had it tied with the Z-95, but stronger than the TIE. Remember, this thing still only cost 55,000 credits, but you also got an impressive armament of two light laser cannons, two light ion cannons, and a concussion missile launcher, with a total payload of two missiles on board. Like its competitor, the R-41 also had S-foils, which allowed it to keep these weapons cool when it was in combat mode. Though the vast majority of these were piloted by a single person, Horish Kessel Drive did try out a two-seater variant, but only a few hundred of these were ever produced. In fact, this ship did not do very well at all, becoming one of this company's most costly failures. This was the result of an arms race that was developing before the Clone Wars, amongst all sorts of ships and vehicle manufacturers who wanted to secure Republic contracts that they felt were coming soon. Everyone knew that the political tension might build up to a secession, and Horish Kessel Drive wanted to be there with a fresh new line of cheap and powerful starfighters. They had visions that this would become the main starfighter in the Republic's navy, but the Force had other plans. A series of delays made it so that the R1 was not available at the opening of the Clone Wars, but really they were already a decade late. In an example of why you might want to carry out corporate espionage, HKD was unaware of a prototype starfighter, which first flew around 31 BBY, and was already being groomed to become the Republic's main starfighter. Obi-Wan and a few others had flown the new ship called the Z-95 Headhunter about a year before the Clone Wars, and with the good reviews, Incom Corporation had secured a major contract. They followed this up with a specific clone pilot variant of the Z-95, and struck a killing blow to HKD with the introduction of the ARC-170. This filled the role of a heavier fighter, with a rear gunner, and both better shields and weapons, so that with all of the capital ships and vehicles being supplied by Kuat Drive Yards, and these two amazing ships being pumped out by Incom, there was no need for the R-41. If that wasn't bad enough, although it proved to be just as powerful and nimble as its stats suggest, because it was developed before the Clone Wars, by the time of the Galactic Civil War, it was considered to be outdated. They were used by the Rebellion in its infancy, during the assault on Kamino, but they were never seen after this, with the release of the X-Wing. These new starfighters had even stronger hulls, shields, weapons, and a faster hyperdrive, even if they were relatively pricey. That didn't really matter though, because Incom designers gave the first four prototypes to the Rebellion, along with blueprints, hoping to overthrow the Empire after their company got nationalized. This left it to be used almost exclusively by criminal organizations like the Black Sun, and pirate gangs like the Reniki, who liked that this ship was easy to maintain in the remote parts of the Outer Rim. And the last time we see one is in the year 10 ABY, when Mara Jade borrows an R-41 in order to escape from a smuggler base with a Jedi holocron. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. It first appeared in the Star Wars TIE Fighter game from 1994, but was expanded upon in the Stay on Target campaign guide. That being said, this ship just shows how sometimes these stats don't make a lot of sense when you start to compare it to other starfighters, especially with the fact that it had hyperdrives and shields while being cheaper than a TIE fighter. It also had better weapons than the TIE, and is only one-third the cost of ships like the X-Wing and ARC-170, while having similar and even better stats in some ways. Also, in the last video on the Marauder class Corvette, I pointed out that there was a mistake in the Darth Maul 2 Legends comic that showed the Corvette as the size of the Starfighter. 
What was shown there is different from the R-41, but many pointed out that the ship seen in the Resistance trailer is likely to be a canon version of the Star Chaser. This would fit with the lore, because you could really see a lot of tuners loving this ship if pirates liked the fact that it was so reliable and easy to repair and maintain. So that's it for the R-41 Star Chaser. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description down below. If you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to like and subscribe, and check out some of our other videos by clicking on these end cards. But most important of all, remember, never underestimate the first-to-market advantage, and the Force will be with you, always.